Welcome to worship this evening with Christ Lutheran Church here in Cottonwood, Minnesota, where the Holy Spirit calls us together as people of God. No matter wherever, whenever, or however we gather together, God is present with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This evening on Monday, Thursday, six students will share communion for the first time. For those of you who gathered together with us wired worship or virtually, we invite you uh, for this service to prepare communion elements for yourselves at home as well. The big question of the night is, what is Monday, Thursday? The Thursday of Holy Week. What's it all about? The word Monday is a shortened version of the Latin word mandatum which means commandment, much like our English word mandate. At the Last Supper, Jesus gave his friends a new commandment. He told his disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. He told his disciples, I give you this new commandment just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And as Christians gather to eat and share the Holy Communion, on Monday, Thursday, we are taught to exhibit our love and respect for all people. As we prepare to say the words of faith together this evening, I invite you to take a moment to close your eyes, to gently breathe in and breathe out. and invite the Spirit of God to enter in. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and share in the words of faith from Psalm 116. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of God's servant. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your making. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of the people, I will shout. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus knelt to wash the feet of his disciples. Let us come before God to confess our need for cleansing. God of love and mercy, you know the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts. You know our coming in and our going out. We confess to you all our sins, those things done and left undone. We have not loved one another as you have loved us. We have not served others as you have served us. Hear our cry, O Lord. Accept our repentance, cleanse us, restore us, and lead us so that we may love and serve in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear the good news. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for you. For, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. This is the good news for you. Thanks Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. And let us pray. 
holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. By your Holy Spirit, write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The reading comes from the 12th chapter of Exodus. Israel remembered its deliverance from slavery in Egypt by celebrating the festival of Passover. This festival featured the Passover lamb whose blood was used as a sign to protect God's people from the threat of death. The early church described the Lord's Supper using imagery from the Passover, especially in portraying Jesus as the lamb who delivers God's people from sin and death. Beginning with the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night And I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. As an introduction to our gospel acclamation this evening, we will sing it all the way through once, and then you sing the first two lines again as the refrain. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. The story of the Last Supper in John's Gospel recalls a remarkable event not mentioned elsewhere. Jesus performs the duty of a slave, washing the feet of his disciples and urging them to do the same for one another. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Beginning with the first verse. 
Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had, gone, he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was betraying him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Bye. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify he, him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. And let us pray. Gracious God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. I want to begin this evening talking about junk drawers. Maybe you, even in your home, so long that your drawer doesn't cut it anymore. Maybe you have a couple of drawers, or a closet, or a whole basement full. I started thinking about junk drawers earlier this week as I had a reason to venture into my own kitchen junk drawer. I was looking for a business card that I thought for sure would have been in there. It wasn't. <laughs> but there was a pocket knife I didn't even know I had. Uh, there was a dead flashlight, a bag of Easter candy from last year, or at least I hope it was last year, and other odds and ends like a roll of electrical tape. When have I used electrical tape? Several Allen wrenches and a couple of little bags of leftover screws what I assume was from the building of the entertainment center over three years ago. Yep, I have a bunch of stuff that I seem to keep around that I probably don't really need. 
But since I am airing some of my dirty laundry, I might as well admit to the boxes and boxes in the basement of teaching supplies from the years of 1994 to 1997. My computer training instruction manuals from 1998 to 2006. And finally, a few boxes of lecture notes and papers I wrote in seminary from 2006 to 2010. I moved all of those boxes and still have not opened any of them. Oh yeah, and then there's the trunk in the living room. I told you, all my dirty laundry's coming out. Filled with newspapers of historical events, a few from college when Desert Storm began, one or two from 2001 when 9-11 happened, and one from 2007 when the I-35 bridge collapsed. I drove over that bridge that day. In this trunk, there are also coins from travels from other countries that would never do me any good in the United States. I also have doilies made by grandma's and great-grandma's wedding dress and some of grandpa's old fishing lures. Yep, I have lots of junk hanging around at the parsonage. Now, I won't ask any of you to bear your own dirty laundry tonight. But during some conversations recently, I've had opportunities to talk a little bit about why we hold on to, why we keep things, ordinary things. The things that if others were to look at them, they would wonder why in the world I've kept them. One person shared that they had scads of seemingly worthless birthday and Christmas cards because they have words written in them by children and grandchildren, other friends and family. Those words make those cards special, not the paper they're written on. Words that for this particular person are stories written on their heart. Another shared how they have kept a bunch of Cracker Jack prizes strung together on a long string. Memories are connected with those little trinkets for this person from their childhood. Now maybe I should explain for our younger generation, Cracker Jacks actually used to come with prizes inside the boxes. <laughs> like little miniature whistles and plastic boats and tanks and little trinkets, not just those virtual codes with mobile prizes like today. And lastly, another person shared that her junk closet was a place where her grandchildren would love to find things to play with when they came to visit. Pulling out things that they only could imagine what they had been used for originally. I myself even remember my own town grandma's kitchen junk drawer where I love to play with the enormous, I kid you not, enormous amount of varied sizes of DQ spoons. <laughs> Rolled up balls of aluminum foil and used bread bags. Oh, and who could forget the cupboard filled with cool, empty Cool Whip containers? Why do we keep all of these ordinary things? I can imagine someone saying, if I get rid of them, then I will for sure need it. Or maybe you just have these, um, a philosophy that if I don't use it and say, let's say another 20 years, then it's safe to get rid of them. Or maybe you lived in a town, time like my town grandma did of the Great Depression where you learned to just save everything. You learned the phrase, waste not, want not. Where you were taught never wasting anything would result in never wanting for anything. And in the home of every one of us, there is a drawer full or a box or two or dare I say a closet full of things which we can only be called junk by most people, and yet we will not throw them out. We cannot make ourselves to do so, because when we touch them or look at them, they bring back to us this or that person, or this or that event, or this or that occasion in our lives. 
They are common things, ordinary things. But they all have something else attached to them. They are ordinary, but they are things that have acquired meaning beyond themselves that only the eye of the beholder can treasure. So by now, I know you're wondering, why in the world am I talking about junk drawers on a night when we celebrate the institution of the Lord's Supper? How does a sacrament so precious and marvelous compared to the junk that we have in our homes? Well, you see, the two sacraments the Lutheran Church believes in are baptism and Holy Communion. Both these sacraments use ordinary things, water for baptism and bread and wine for Holy Communion. A sacrament is an ordinary thing which has acquired meaning beyond itself. For when we hear the splashes of water as Jesus washed the feet of of the disciples, we are reminded of our children's and our own baptisms. For when we touch the bread or see the wine, we are reminded of a significant person for our lives. For Jesus Christ, who bared his perfectness on the cross for our imperfections. For when we touch or see the elements, we remember an event that happened over 2,000 years ago in an upper room in a city named Jerusalem. When we touch or see the bread and the wine, we are reminded of an occasion that connects us to years and years of celebrating a small meal in the house of God, connecting us to God's people of the past, to God's people here with you this day, and to God's people of the future. As these Fifth grade students learned in the First Communion class, it is only bread and wine, ordinary things that are the elements of communion. It is the commandment, the mandate from Christ along with the words we remember Christ saying over the elements that changes ordinary things into extraordinary things. Same thing happens during baptism. It is simply water from the tap until we call upon the promises and the power of the Holy Spirit to enter into the space. Overall, it is these extraordinary things that are treasured in the eyes of the beholder. The words which are said each and every time we celebrate this meal of remembrance or splash the water of baptism that we remember the words written on our hearts. Words that make ordinary things a sacrament. So like the junk in our homes, we keep these ordinary things, the bread and the wine and the water. Yet unlike the junk where we could say, if I get rid of it, then I will need it for sure, we trust in the need of communion for us over and over again because of our humanness. Yet unlike the junk where maybe we have the philosophy that we don't use it in 20 years and it was safe to get rid of it, we believe it will never be safe to get rid of communion. For again and again we are reminded of the preciousness it has for our lives. Yet like saving, unlike saving junk because you learn the phrase, waste not, want not, we have faith in a small portioned meal of, a bread, of bread and of a sip of wine where we are reminded through the words of promise that Christ's innocent death was a waste. But because of it, we will indeed never want for mercy. The breadcrumbs we eat And the sip of wine we drink is common bread and wine, ordinary bread and wine. But for ones who have the story written in their hearts, it is a representation of meaning beyond ourselves. It is in the memory of this representation of the very body and blood of our sacrificed and loving Savior that we know we carry around junk in our lives. We all carry around junk 
broken relationships, unkind words uttered, sins we have done, junk. The difference between our junk drawers and Christ is he boldly throws away all of our junk. He throws it away daily through the forgiveness, for his forgiveness for each one of us. Yet we celebrate Holy Communion because in the eyes of the people of God, we cherish the person, the event, and the occasion in which it was instituted. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your son as the servant to the world. He washed the feet of his disciples in order to show the love he had for them and for us. We pray you will guide our hearts to share the same love with each other and that we may glorify you with our actions to serve others. Amen. Let us profess the faith that we have through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As we enter these holy days, together let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O oh God, in great love you formed the church. Continue to fashion your people. Lead us into unity. Teach us to watch, wash each other's feet. Gather us all at your one table of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, with great delight you created the heavens and the earth. In the mystery of Christ's self-giving love, Restore all things to health and unity in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you love every nation. Bring justice, hope, and peace to all the peoples of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, your compassion knows no bounds. Comfort those who grieve. Console those in despair, heal the sick, bolster those with addictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Oh God, your mercy endures forever, and you love your people to the end. Wash us in your forgiveness and feed us with your love, making us your people, blessed and broken for the world. Bless Connor, Tegan, Tucker, Connor, Jayla, and Morgan, as they experience the gift of love in Holy Communion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the saints sing the praises of your unending love. Keep us united with them always, until our faith is changed to sight, and your love is all in all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God of love, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us give prayers of thanksgiving for the gifts that you give to this church. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And Jesus said, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also. After supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We come unto Christ in the bread we share. We come unto Christ in the cup we share. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to be seated.
Tonight, we end worship with a reading from Psalm 22, a reminder of the transition from Monday, Thursday to Good Friday. The altars are stripped bare. All worship fixtures are removed and the lights are turned low. Through this symbolic act, we are reminded of the deep darkness that surrounded Jesus in his suffering and death. We will depart in silence following the words of the psalm and the tolling of the church bell. There will be no sending blessing or closing music. Stay as long as you wish, but we ask you to depart in silence. We enter into worship tomorrow evening again at 7 p.m. for Good Friday service in that same silence. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In your ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one on whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe in my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. 
You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offering of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or pour the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pray before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. <laughs> 